Welcome back, guys, to CFL Central, CFL content for the fans, by the fans. And we have episode six of the CFL Central uh, of the CFL Central podcast, and we have a very special guest with us today, uh, kicker for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Sergio Castillo. Thank you so much for joining us. I uh, appreciate you guys having me and uh, look, look forward to, uh, you know, our, our conversation and see where it goes. Absolutely. We're, we're going to have some interesting ones for you, some, some that... Uh, you would not get in your normal media for, for better or worse. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, no, we just kind of, we, we like just kind of a lighthearted discussion, just maybe showing a, a different side of you that the, that people wouldn't, I guess, see in kind of the, the normal press conference sort of thing. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that we're curious about is kind of like how, um, you know, everyone kind of gets into football very differently. I mean, like last week we had uh, Dean Faithful on, uh, from uh, mm. for, for the Elks, who obviously, you know, from England. So very different story about how he got into football uh, coming from there. But uh, what got you into gridiron football? You know, uh, I was a soccer guy and the football coach came asking one day, hey, can we have a, uh, a kicker uh, come try out? You know, we need a kicker. And um, the end of my freshman year in high school, I tried out. I did not think much of it. And I forgot about the tryout. Summer rolls around and uh, band camp starts. I was in the drum line back in high school. So we were in band camp. And I remember my uh, band director, Mr. Adame, he calls me. He's like, hey, Sergio, the football coach wants to come talk to you. I'm like, what? Why does he want to talk to me? I had totally forgot about the about the tryout. And uh, and he's like, hey, Sergio, you know, based off your tryout from last year, you know, towards the end of the year, uh, your starting kicker for La Jolla Coyotes. And I was just like, wow, I was excited. But then I told him right off the bat, I'm like, look, if I cannot march uh, with my with the band, I'm not going to play football, you know, because my band was my 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 world back then. Right. He's Absolutely. like, no, no, we'll we'll find a way. And uh, so, um, you know, at six in the morning, I will go kick before school. And then uh, after school, I would do band practice. And that's how it started. For sure. And actually, not going to lie, you completely beat us to it as the we were we were going to ask about the band because we, we when we were looking into this, that was something we noticed. I'm like, we, we got to we got to get this figured out, Rick. But I, th I think you had something there, Rick. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in the drum line. I, I played I, I played bass drum. And so in halftime, I would I would take my my pads off. I put my drum on and I march. And then uh, in the third quarter, you know, I put my football pads on and then get ready to kick some footballs. <laughs> We need, we need a, we need a little bit of, we need you to join the uh, drum line for the pregame for the Bombers sometime. Got to, got to join up. That, that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> there you go. Got to ask O'Shea about that. See if, see if he approves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next question is describe your playing time. Your, sorry, describe your time playing sports growing up, up to the end of high school. Uh, Try to play a little bit of everything, you know, and, you know, I enjoyed baseball. I was in baseball as well. Soccer was my thing, too, back then. And football. Football, obviously, is king in Texas. So to be able to experience Friday Night Lights in, in Texas is just uh, a unique experience, especially when you have ten to 12,000 fans a game at La Jolla, Texas. So um, that was just a pretty unique experience. Absolutely. But I mean, like, so like, it, it's good hearing about your time, especially in college and inter like, I, I find it very interesting, specifically kind of how uh, being in band was like, it like, was like a huge thing for you in the sense of like, I don't know if we've had anyone else on who is who like a big band kid who got into it, which I, I absolutely love. I was I was in band for a while, not, not, not no sort of marching band or anything like that. But um, mm -hmm. but it was interesting kind of how that's um, that was kind of your transition, as I even remember. Uh, crap, I can't remember if it was a year or two years ago, we had Johnny Augustine on and he was talking about how <laughs> his transition to, to football was MMA. So very, yeah. very different uh, transition uh, into, uh, you know, gridiron football. But I mean, obviously, you know, you said you grew up in te uh, you grew up in Texas, big football atmosphere. How was your time at West Texas A&M? Oh, man, it was fun. Um, you, uh, I'm assuming y'all seen the movie Friday Night Lights. That's a movie I need to see. Yes, yes. Yeah. So th that's basically the town that I that I went to college. You know, it's you could rob a bank on Friday and Saturday nights because everyone was at the football game. So <laughs> it was um, uh, a, a very beautiful experience. It was a small Division two school, so 
Uh, very fortunate, though. We would get, you know, 15 to sometimes 18,000 people a game. So for a very small town, that was pretty, pretty fun. And, and you know, we live in that town now, um, my wife and I and my son. And, you know, just last week, I went back home for the bye week. And we went to a, the high school, uh, Canyon, Texas, Canyon High School's homecoming game. And there was 15,000 people there just watching, wow. you know, a bunch of teenagers just try and play football, which is nuts. And, you know, and I was one of them. And it's, it's, it's just um, it's, a, it's a way of life. It's a part of life. So, you know, West Texas, I never thought I would live there after, but I just love the whole small town vibes. It's just very peaceful, very chill. I think I have best of both worlds where I play and my wife tells me, you're you're a rock star for six months in Canada. You're, you're, you're well known over there. And then you come to West Texas and nobody knows you. You're just, you know, I'm just hubby and dad and daddy duties. Right. That, so um, I have the best of both worlds right now. So Absolutely. I can't complain. It's probably nice how kind of you you can kind of I, I I guess get a little bit of both of that in the sense of you know when you're in Canada you're playing football and you know you know there's probably people who may recognize you approach you and whatnot but then you can kind of when you want to just go spend time with your family you can focus on that and probably I hopefully not get too much interruption on that in that regard um, but overall what would you say was your best college memory? And, that, and, I'll, and I'll ask one football related and one non football mm -hmm. related. Non football related was probably just just hanging out with the guys, right? And and it'd be, you know, it, I loved the spring when we didn't have you know football games, just because you could in the weekends you could actually hang out and just bond with the boys, right? And then you end up doing dumb stuff, you know. You, you know how it is with 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 young college boys, you know. And it's just you make memories and. Um, so just hanging out with the guys, I really do miss that. I miss the talks. Uh, but a memory I would say was um, I'm trying to think non-football related. So back then, uh, our guys, there was a group of eight to ten of us. We would just make funny, dumb videos of of just whatever was going on at the time. Uh, our quarterback uh, Dustin Vaughn, who was one of the, he was actually Tony Romo's backup. Uh, his first year out of college, we made a video that the year before of him being this super arrogant, cocky guy, and which is it's totally not him. He's super quiet. And the funny thing is that video blew up when he signed with the Dallas Cowboys. And they're <laughs> like, uh, you know, what sparked this video? And it's obviously us just being dumb, right? We did not know that he was going to be playing with the Dallas Cowboys and he, it, it, that video was going to blow up. So just little things like that, you know, we would do. And uh, a football related, you know, my senior year, we were, there was one game we were losing to Chatteron State uh, at Cowboy Stadium. Yep. We were losing, you know, by three touchdowns and we ended up making a comeback, ended up kicking a game winner at the end. So that was pretty, pretty, pretty unique memory. There you go. Uh, and that, and that, that's great to hear kind of how you're able to have, you know, some experiences that, that are great in both regards. As I mean, I, I think I remember when we had Braylon Addison on, he was, uh, he was talking about, cause he, you know, he was from, I, I believe he was from Texas as well, but he was talking about how, when he went and played uh, college football, he went up North to Oregon or whatever and how he was involved. And I think it was like a campus wide snowball fight or something like that. <laughs> and so <laughs> kind of a, dip, a different atmosphere in that regard. So it's just kind of yeah. good to hear kind of the, the both sides of that. But I think Rick, you had something. There. Yeah, so since you were undrafted in 20, 2014, what was it like to play in the NFL with the Falcons and the Jets? You know, at first I entered very naive. You know, I didn't know how the business worked. And, you know, even though I played two great preseason games, um, I knew I was not going to take the job away from Matt Bryan at the time. Yet um, I thought I was going to stay the whole training camp, but because of injuries, I got released. And that's when I got, you know, hit with the uh, – with the business side, you know, and so, uh, but then in 2020, when I finally made it to the Jets, it, um, it, it made it all worth that I've been through, especially when I tore my ACL in 2017, you know, and that was a big, big time, big, uh, pivotal. It could have been a, it could have gone one way or the other, you know, I could have quit football and started doing, you know, a regular working job. Right. And, and or I could have kept pursuing and I'm just grateful for the people around me, especially my wife, that, you know, she kept pushing me into 
I remember when I kicked that first field goal with the Jets and finally in an actual regular season game, it was a 29 yarder. I'm jotting down the field and tears start rolling off my eyes just because I start reminiscing on just a journey just to get there. And I have to quickly like, you know, wipe them away. I'm like, cause it was better the first drive of the game and we still had four quarters to play. So um, it was just a very unique experience, you know, especially after making it, you know, after seven years of, of trying to get back into it. Absolutely. So my, I have another question. How was it like to play in the AAF for the San Antonio Commodores? So I never got to play with them. I was just a backup and I didn't get released because, um, you know, I just had knee problems. They were not, knee wasn't healing up well from the ACL yet. So I just didn't get to uh, fully experience that. Like I wish I would have uh, I liked. Yeah, no, just because I, I found it interesting when I was looking into it, just because I see, obviously, you had spent time with the in the Alliance of the American Football with uh, with the commanders there. And then I saw that you were also uh, listed with the Houston Roughnecks as well. So uh, yeah. how was your experience in the XFL? Man, it was just a perfect storm because the year before, the Texans had blown that big lead to the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs. You all remember that game? It was like 28 points. That they blew. They blew a big lead to Kansas City in the playoffs. So the, the Houston fans were mad or frustrated at the Texans. Yeah. So they turned to us. Oh, and there we did go. not think we were gonna, that we did not think we we're gonna have any fans. You know, we're expecting five thousand people if, you know. And then we start almost packing up that uh University of Houston Stadium every game. There's twenty two, twenty three thousand fans every game. And on top of obviously you have a great product, you know, people are going to want to come. So that aspect to not having much expectation to surpassing it, it was just like, wow. And obviously going on that run and um, it was pretty unique. Absolutely. And so, you know, I guess now like you, you've played in a wide variety of leagues in the sense of, you know, you yeah. know you've played in the CFL, you've been in the NFL, you've been in the XFL, you've been in the Alliance. Uh, what would you say is being kind of a big difference between, um, being in those leagues as I can't, I don't know if there's a lot of players that have been in quite a wide spread of leagues in that regard. Just kind of the different experiences in each. The experiences, you know, obviously with the XFL, AAF, it's, it's starting. You don't know if it's, you know, unfortunately just be, unfortunately just because those leagues have not lasted, right. You're, you're wondering, is it going to last? Right. You know, everything's so new. Um, you know, with the CFL, it's amazing how you have the traditions, you know, with the rivalries, which is I really, it's what I really appreciate about playing up here. And it makes it fun coming up here, right? And um, obviously the NFL, it's it's a little bit more, not serious, right? But it's longer hours, right? Compared to the CFL and the, the XFL, AAF. So, yep. uh, but at the end of the day, you know, locker room's locker room, you know, guys are guys. So it's, it's you have your funny guys, you have your serious guys, you have your jokesters, your singers, your dancers. So it's, um, you know, locker room's the same. Yeah, I mean, that's fair because, I mean, at the end of the day, going and playing some football. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So my question is, describe your journey to the CFL for the first time after being cut in 2014 by the Falcons and joining the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in 2015. Yeah, I um I went to a couple of tryouts that they have here in the states of the free agent combines, and um, you know, I, I got signed by Hamilton first because I went to their combine first, and then um uh, I remember I was there for a month behind Medlock and Hamilton and, uh, uh, on the practice roster, and um we um. I got released on a Monday, but the Friday before we had played Winnipeg. And, uh, you know, I had done a little bit of kicking in pregame before Medlock had gone out. So I, I feel like that had something maybe to do it, with it. You know, maybe they saw me kick and, you know, I got released. And, and uh, you know, the rest is history, right? You know, I ended up in Winnipeg, got to debut after, you know, six, seven weeks being behind, uh, you know, Lerum. And, and that's when my uh, career, you know, I guess you could say it you know, finally took off in a way. So, I mean, I think, to be honest, I think I know where this is going. However, you know, what what has been your best memory playing, like, in the CFL? Uh, I have two memories. Um, number one is, a, uh, or the first one that comes to my mind is when I debuted it with Winnipeg back in 2015. It was a must-win 
uh, situation to stay alive in the playoffs and went five for five, kicked a 41 yarder game winner. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't expect to have that big of um, a say so, <laughs> or you know, a big impact in the game. And yep. uh, I was just very fortunate that the, you know, the offense gave me, you know, five golden opportunities, right, to to kick and uh, contribute for the team. So uh, those are the two memories that definitely come to mind. That's fair. Yeah, and I, and it cut it a little bit. Was the other one the Great Cup? Yes, the second one was a Great Cup. Uh, okay. You know, that was only one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I knew that was gonna come up. Uh, what What was the best part of, about playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? You know, it was just uh, playing for Coach O. She's he's an awesome, you know, human being. You know, he's he's a players' coach. He he doesn't get rattled, you know, and he's just very he's a very patient, uh, Absolutely. human being before and you know before a coach as well. So that um. It's uh, it's it's just pretty sweet to play for someone who who understands, right? Because he played the game for a long time. Yep. And so he he understands how you know um, uh, you know how we how we feel at times, you know, and so you know just playing for for a, a an awesome human being uh is amazing. It makes me want to you know run a wall for for Coach Osh. There you go. And that, honestly, that that's great to hear in the sense of. You know, I, I've met Coach Oche, absolutely, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal person. And that's one thing that I notice even when watching is that no matter what the score is, no matter how the game is going, I don't think they've, I don't think I've ever seen them pan the camera onto Coach Oche and he looks at all worried or whatever, like, like they'll go into half. And if, you know, if you guys are down, he'll be like, you know, we still got another half of football. Like the game's not yeah, done. So what is there to worry yeah, about? Exactly. And I was like that level of composure, I feel like probably has to have a few, a, a huge effect on you guys. Oh, a hundred percent, you know, especially happened, you know, it's happened a couple of times this year, but when, when we were down in Edmonton this year and I saw him very calm and, and the guys were calm, I'm like, okay, you know, and then Drew Brown started slinging it. And, um, you know, obviously we, uh, you know, the we ended up making a huge comeback that game, but you know it starts with with, with Coach Osh. Absolutely. Now, one thing I have, and this is something that I'm going to find uh, definitely a bit interesting, uh, being the the Winnipeg fan on this call. Sorry, Rick. Um, <laughs> That's okay. But uh, what was it like being a photographer for Win for the Winnipeg Jets, and how did that come about? As that was something that was very recently in the sense of like we were preparing for this and then i saw the, the jets twitter posting about this i'm like oh we got to include this like this is great yeah <laughs> so it, it's funny because it blew up more than i thought right i didn't think it was gonna blow up or anything right and uh, um i picked up photography in um uh, in uh in december and i just been going to different sporting events um anywhere i can go you know it's texas here mls uh Hawk, um, not, uh, barely hockey, right? And uh, so my agent asked me a couple of weeks ago, "Hey, how's photography going?" I'm like, well, "It's kind of slow because you know all the sports are kind of they, they ended. You know, like there was a PGA event here, uh, the Gold Eyes are done, the Sea Bears are done. I'm like, I'm trying to get to the Jets, and he's like, uh, but it's just so hard, you know, because there's only so many amount of people that can get credentials per game. Yep. And he's like, let me see what I can do. And then um, a week later, he calls me. On game day, he's like, hey, just spoke to uh, my buddy uh, Chevy. He's a GM. Uh, be expecting an email uh, with some credentials and uh, the do's and don'ts. And I was like, heck, yeah, let's go. There you so, go. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, it was definitely um, definitely the fastest sport I've ever had to shoot. You know, I've shot oh, college yeah. basketball, and that's pretty fast. Uh, but, you know, hockey is just, you know, just because you have such a small little – window to shoot the camera from um and it's just and those guys are just so quick and i don't really know the game of hockey so i can't you know normally like basketball baseball soccer i can anticipate uh what a player is going to do so i can get ready to take the shot in hockey i don't know what's going on uh <laughs> so um you know um but it was it was a fun experience so i did learn a lot the people from the jets you know great hospitality any questions I had, I was just poking their brain, you know, trying to, Absolutely. you know, 
sponge up any kind of info I can along here with, you know, with the blue bombers, our social media, um, our, our, our photography, videography guys, they're, they're amazing, you know? So anytime I have any questions there, they're yep. more than willing to help me out. Yeah, I know. And I'm always, when, whenever the bombers get a win, I always like, I'm, I feel like I'm sitting on Instagram just waiting for that video to come out that they that they do after every win that yes. comes out on the Instagram and the Twitter. Yes. I absolutely love that. Yeah. <laughs> I have it, no idea how it's that always... came about, but. Um. So my question is: oh, Do you have on, a favorite a pair of? Cl we're we're cutting out here again. <laughs> uh, there, there we Sergio? go. Okay. Uh, might if you repeat yes. that. <laughs> Okay, so my question was, do you have a favorite pair of cleats or kicking shoes that you consider lucky? And if so, what's the story behind them? Um, you know, honestly, I just need to find a shoe that's wide enough because I have really wide, fat feet. <laughs> and uh, so right now, the past couple of years, I've been rocking the New Balance, the, the dad shoes. <laughs> you know, I never thought they'd be a, a, a cleat that I would wear, but it's just they're, they're just so comfortable around you know, as soon as I put them on. Absolutely. Now, one interesting thing as well, and this was something that was, you know, and, and this kind of goes back to a little bit what you're saying about Coach O'Shea being so composed and, you know, and calm is mm -hmm. that, you know, the position of kicking, I have to imagine, can be a very, very high stress position. Uh, and so kind of how do you manage that stress? Um, Photography. <laughs> 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 you know yeah, yeah i i i've as the years have gone by i think i've become more composed but because i i do stuff outside of football right i golf i lift and and now i do photography right and it's just my mind is not just consume about football 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 i am um, i get excited about my other passions and i feel like that has helped me you know be the guy that i am on the field why because I am where my feet are at, right? So if it's Absolutely. I only worry about football when football is, is going on, right? So um, you know, I think uh, you know, so like if there's a soccer game and I'm gonna go shoot the game or a basketball game, I'm gonna take pictures, you know. Um that like I, I look forward to that. Why? Because it takes my mind away from from football. So it's just really I think it's just finding another outlet, another passion, uh that has helped me out o over the years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, my question is: Are there any CFL or NFL kickers, past or present, that you admire that's drawn inspiration from in your career? Yeah. Um. Uh, number one, uh, Justin Medlock. Right. I was behind him in 2015, but in 2016, when I was behind him here in Winnipeg, I got to learn what it meant to be like a pro. Like I, I had the qualities to be a a pro in terms of a. Tech technical and physical aspect that was strong but not up here right you know how to train the day-to-day -day basis right you don't just kick to kick you always have a specific uh uh practices you know you don't just oh i'm just gonna punt 20 balls or kick 20 balls and that's it. it's like no why are we kicking there's always a there's a purpose behind every kick right so not just kick to kick um so i got to experience that firsthand and i think that's what really helped me out in 2017 when i finally took a a starting role with Hamilton um is because he helped me out in that aspect uh so yeah Justin Medlock would be uh my top guy absolutely um so I have another question weather conditions can have a significant impact on special plays what are the most challenging weathers that you played in and how did you adapt and what's your fa favorite weather to play in? uh you know the great cup was a crazy one it was like uh it was super windy, but it's just like in Amarillo, Texas. They say Chicago's the windy city. No, Amarillo's the windy city. So I always say if you can kick in Amarillo, Texas, you can kick anywhere. So, uh, But definitely the Great Cup, it was a little challenging just because the wind was just as strong as it can be. Uh, it was cold, so it makes you know the, the football a little bit harder. It's not harder to kick. It doesn't just – it doesn't travel as far compared to just a uh, normal, you know, sunny day, 20, 30 degree – uh, Celsius. So, um, uh, best weather to kick is in a dome, which is coming this <laughs> this Friday in BC. <laughs> there you go. 
absolutely. <laughs> it's got to be a great time whenever you go over there. So that way, you yes, got, got the got the controlled climate. That's got to be nice. Yes. Now, one interesting thing, and we and we ask absolutely everyone this, just because we can get some really great stuff out of this. Um, you yeah. know, so obviously you have your time on the field, um, you have your time at home, but there's going to be times where you're going to be approached by fans. There's going to be times where you're going to have interactions mm-hmm. with fans where you may have to take a picture, you may have to sign something. What is the weirdest thing you have ever had to sign? Ever had to sign? I mean, I've signed a couple arms. I think I signed a forehead one time, and I. The parent was there, and the parent was all for it. For the kid, I was like, okay. I just didn't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to think. Um, you know, probably the forehead, you know, and it's just – I was like, as long as the parent gave, gave me the go, I was like, all right. There you go. Just wait Just wait for them to go get it tattooed on. It'll be all – Right. <laughs> like Post Malone. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So as a as um, as a season kicker, do you see yourself transitioning into coaching or mentoring uh, young kickers and punters in the future? And actually, I believe someone one of our viewers mentioned this. Um, do you uh, do you do anything with Maya Turner and the Bisons by chance? Uh, yeah. So I uh, I've been coaching kickers since you know it's been a probably a decade now, and uh, now I'm starting to have a lot more kids in college now in the states. Um, you know, obviously I, I have quite a few high school kids as well. I do kicking camps in Mexico and, um, you know, uh, I've been working with the, the, the Bisons and, and Maya since, uh, you know, their training camp. So, but Maya, you know, she was already what she is now. That's all her, right. You know, I honestly did not have much to do in it, you know, like she, she's solid, right. So Absolutely. she came, came from a great foundation of technique, um, I'm just very, I was, I just feel very fortunate to know her and to, you know, be part of, of, of knowing that, you know what, I got to meet and the, the very first woman to ever do this. So that's, that's pretty cool, you know, to, to experience, but, you know, yeah, I do help out uh, as much as I can, but like I said, you know, most of, you know, I, I didn't have much to do with her technique or any of that stuff. She, she's, she's good at what she does. Absolutely. So I think that was pretty much everything we had. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and taking your time as you know, we especially mid season, you know, you guys got games coming up and all that. So I, I appreciate yeah. the fact that you're willing uh, to take some time with us. So uh, for everyone watching at home, make sure you guys, you know, keep watching the rest of the season cheering on Sergio, or if you're Rick, maybe not. But honestly, Rick, you, <laughs> you should start cheering on the Bombers. Hey, 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 hey great cups hey. over here. <laughs> hey, listen, if, if we can make it a third year this year, except for the home team actually winning this time. Uh, funny fact, I actually looked at the, at the summary sheet earlier, and could you believe that Sergio Castillo had 38, what was it, 15 of the 33 points just from kicking field goals and getting single points? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it was it was it was a big it was a big game that game you know and the win helped me out on, on some of the you know the kickoffs that we got those single points so uh, you know they, like I said it was a big factor that game absolutely but again like thank you thank you so much for coming on for for anyone at home make sure you guys like share and subscribe if you guys have not already comment down below uh, what you guys thought of this if you have any more <laughs> questions for for Castillo we'll send him his way see how it goes. And uh, yeah, again, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, and yeah, for our viewers at home, till, till next time. Touchdown,